Welcome ladies and gentlemen, my name is Byronic and this week on Star Guide Sunday we've got some sweet details on upcoming ships, updates on patch 0.9 and more. Without any further delay, let's kick this into gear. First up this week, you can play Star Citizen for free. At DragonCon 2014, attendees were given a code allowing a single free week in Arena Commander. Now before you thousand dollar ship guys get all riled up, the trial players are just getting an Aurora and will not be keeping it after the trial expires. This is an amazing idea on CIG's part. For a lot of folks, getting into Star Citizen is a daunting concept with many misconceptions on price of entry and so forth. In any case, I've had the free code up on the screen that anyone can use, so if you know someone on the verge of making the dive into becoming a citizen, send them this way and have some fun. Next up, Chris Roberts gave a special 10 for the chairman this week dubbed the Reddit edition. We learned some pretty interesting facts, one of which was about players and ship inventory. Players will have clothing items such as jackets, trousers, backpacks, and so forth. Each of these items adds a certain amount of inventory slots based on the quality and type of the clothing. Now ship inventory is handled in exactly the same way. Keep in mind though that these are just for personal effects and not for hauling cargo. Chris Roberts later went on and started talking about ship specifications. First, he addressed weapons and item balancing and how CIG will handle overpowered things using inverse fiction. For example, say a weapon is severely overpowered at the point of game breaking. CIG will step in and say the weapon manufacturer recalled the weapon, which is their way of saying an item is disabled till back end tweaking can be made to bring that weapon back in line. Second, Chris Roberts talked about ship components and their effectiveness in combat. All ship components do not share the same health and damage points. They are unique. For example, if you have a wing with 100 damage points, adding titanium armor would give that wing 200 damage points before becoming destroyed. Armor is a plug-in item that adds weight and a visual change to what it is added to. This way it impacts ship handling in a negative way, so a heavily armored ship won't handle as well as an unarmored one. Moving on, Gamer Nexus released the second part of an interview with Chris Roberts which included a ton of random yet impactful information. Starting at the top, character customization is still being developed. CIG is unsure whether or not they will have sliders, but presets for face, body, etc, the usual, are the current backdrop. Clothing, as we talked about before, will be purchased from planetary stores. They have already begun developing unique styles from specific planets because not everyone is interested in wearing Uggs. Space stations. They will be divided into two types. One that are takeable and ones that are not. When I say takeable, that means players can physically take over the space station and use it as a base of operations which can be customized. CIG has determined that some space stations should remain untakeable and I completely agree. Imagine starting as a new player and you can't do anything because some asshats won't allow you into a specific base. I'm all for player controlled bases, but for the sake of new players, I completely support specific untakeable bases. Alright, that's it for the Gamer Nexus interview. Earlier this week, we got a concept piece of the 890 jump. Now I decided to show you this image because I wanted to put into perspective the size of the ship. It was already confirmed that the 890 jump is larger than the Constellation, but even so, I think we're looking at a ship on par with the Retaliator or Caterpillar. In any case, I'm using my saved money from not buying the Phoenix and seeing what this baby has to offer. Moving on, we had another sneak peek during episode 12 on Around the Verse. Ben Lesnick specifically said that these images are of multiple cockpits, but of which sp ships specifically, he won't say. Most speculation includes ships such as the Gladiator, Gladius, and Retaliator. In any case, the hype is real. During Reverse the Verse, we got a bunch of small but significant details just like last week. I'm going to list them in no particular order, so here it goes. First, the physical Connie 10-inch models are still set to ship on September 8th. The Starfarer is currently being white-boxed, and the in-flight refueling mechanics are being developed, which includes scoops. Planetside information is set to be revealed soon, and PAX Australia was again mentioned as being the first reveal date for the FPS module. The reveal will not be scripted, so expect actual gameplay. 
Customizable HUDs will be introduced with the multi-crewed ships and are looking to be amazing. The Cutlass variants will be out before Christmas, probably sooner, and there will be an anniversary sale for CIG, so keep those eyes and ears open. Lastly, the Banu Merchman will not be finished this year. This... This makes me very sad. My dreams of hauling cargo dashed against the cruel rocks of reality. Good night, my sweet prince. Finally this week, we had another patch 0 point update, which basically went on as expected. Yes, it was delayed. Was I surprised? Not really. In any case, the next potential release date is the middle of next week. Expect an update on Wednesday, September 10th if the status of the build changes. Alright folks, that is it for this week's Star Guide Sunday. Thank you very much for watching. As a quick heads up for those sci-fi fans out there, tomorrow at midnight, Destiny launches in all its Peter Dinklage glory. I gotta say, it's gonna be hard to choose between racing in the Murray Cup and taking back the moon from Moon Wizards. But in any case, if you are interested, I will have a full playthrough of Destiny on my channel starting this week. Again, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the verse.